only on VOA1, the hits. Welcome to Learning English, a daily 30-minute program from the Voice of America. I'm Jonathan Evans. And I'm Ashley Thompson. This program is aimed at English learners, so we speak a little slower and we use words and phrases especially written for people learning English. Today on the program, you will hear from Dan Friedel and Brian Lenn. Later, we will present our American history series, The Making of a Nation. But first, more than 10 years ago, the American technology company Apple began telling its smartphone users that if something was worth doing, there's an app for that. Now, there is an app for fighting terrorism. The U.S. National Counterterrorism Center recently launched its Act Knowledge mobile application or app. It can be downloaded from Apple's App Store and from the NCTC website. The app is a one-stop shop to get unclassified counterterrorism information, one NCTC official said. The official did not want to be identified in order to discuss the center's move into mobile apps. Something that is a one-stop shop is something that enables people to do many different things in one place. Official said a version should be available in the coming months from the Google Play App Store. The information will also be available in a version for personal computers. The app is being made available to the public. However, only counterterrorism professionals will be able to use all its features. NCTC officials said officials within the U.S. federal government and the U.S. military can use the app now. State and local counterterrorism officials will be able to use the app in the near future. This is a tremendous evolution of our information-sharing efforts, a NCTC expert who helped develop the Act Knowledge app told reporters. We're moving from a weekly, regularized information-sharing effort via email to a daily, near-real-time effort the expert said. Like other apps, NCTC's Acknowledge will permit users to get notifications, search, and follow the latest news and information. The NCTC said the new mobile app will also permit the center to see what kind of information its government partners are looking for. In addition, the center will be able to make sure that information or training is made available. Officials are taking steps to protect the system from those who might try to misuse it. You're required to use your official government email address to register, a second NCTC expert said. That expert also did not want to be identified. The expert added that there is a system in place to make sure users are approved to receive the information. Officials said many of the app's features were designed with the help of police and fire departments from across the United States. Christy Abizade is the director of NCTC. She said in a statement, with the release of Act Knowledge, NCTC is delivering on our mission to innovate how we share intelligence products with our partners. She added, The app empowers its users with the information they need to protect their communities from potential threats.
scientists from Argentina are working to understand more about microorganisms found in Antarctica that may be able to help clean up pollutants like plastic and diesel fuel. The scientists believe the very small organisms eat pollution left behind by fuel and possibly plastic waste. The study results could be useful for wider environmental issues. The scientists are working to find out if the organisms, bacteria and fungi native to Antarctica, can also work in warmer climates. The scientists found that the microorganisms can digest the waste created by diesel fuel, which is a common source of heat and electricity at research bases in Antarctica. Scientists have a reason for wanting to reduce pollution in Antarctica. The continent is protected by a rule created in 1961 that says it can be used for research only if it is left in good condition. Dr. Lucas Ruberto is a biochemist working on the study. He said the organisms that live in the Antarctic soil can eat and break apart hydrocarbon pollution. Ruberto and other scientists went to the Carlini Research Base in December. The team carried out tasks related to bioremediation, or returning something back to its natural state. They cleaned soil affected by diesel fuel by using native microorganisms and plants. The scientists found that the process, which can be used during Antarctica's warm season, removed 60 to 80 percent of pollutants in soil. Roberto said the team helped the microbes by adding nitrogen, humidity, and airflow to improve soil conditions. Basically, with that, we get the microorganisms to biologically reduce, with a very low environmental impact, the level of contaminants, Roberto told Reuters reporters. A contaminant is something that makes a substance no longer suitable for use. The scientists are now trying to research how the microbes could help clean up plastic waste in other places. Both fuels and plastics are polymers, molecules made up of mainly carbon and hydrogen. The researchers are looking into whether the microorganisms native to Antarctica can eat plastic waste. They are collecting pieces of plastic from Antarctic waters and looking to see if the microbes are degrading or breaking down the plastic. Natalie Bernard is an expert in plastic biodegradation. She said, If we find that it is indeed degrading plastic, the next step would be to understand how it does that. The long-term goal, she added, is to create a process in which microorganisms can help clean up plastic and fuel pollution in other parts of the world. I'm Dan Friedel. The Winter Olympic Games continue in China. Here are some of the different technologies being used in Beijing. A series of different kinds of robots have been deployed to assist visitors and athletes. Some machines are being used to enforce social distancing requirements related to COVID-19. Robots are also transporting equipment, cleaning surfaces, and preparing and carrying food to limit human-to-human -human contact. 
smart waste containers are also being used, as well as machines that can make and serve alcoholic drinks and coffee. At the Winter Olympic Village, the athletes are sleeping on smart beds equipped with sensors. The devices collect information on things like breathing and heart rates. They also have controls to permit users to choose different sleeping positions, including one called zero gravity. That setting is supposed to reduce pressure on muscles and joints, and support higher quality sleep. These high-tech beds are very different from the lower-tech versions provided for Olympic athletes at last year's Tokyo Games. The beds used in Japan, which received wide attention for being so unusual, were made of cardboard material for environmental reasons. Members of the media in Beijing can try out the same beds the athletes are using in special sleep rest cabins. The cabins or containers permit reporters to enter and rest for up to an hour. The cabins are fully cleaned after each use. China's digital money will be in use at the Olympics in the currency's first major test with foreigners. Visitors will be able to use digital yuan to pay for food, transportation, and other goods and services. Users can get the currency by downloading an app.